pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. As per the agenda, we were going to um, break out to an executive session at 6.30. It's no longer necessary, so we'll start tonight's uh, early scheduled meeting. Uh, first up is downtown Mayapack Properties for public hearing. planning issues, Mr. Chairman, and it's on this evening for a public hearing. Anyone on the board have any comments? My, my comment the last meeting or two was we'd like to see the property cleaned up. I understand you haven't gotten the rules yet, but uh, there's a lot of storage there. And Dave, you committed to do that, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Kim, do you have any? I think we were talking about conditions based on if the property was clean, when the property was cleaned up. Speaking to I think we were talking about conditions based on if the property was cleaned up. Yes. Okay. Well, as, as, as you can see, as part of the site plan, the uh, site plan shows the entire site and everything is being taken care of as per the consultants so that the entire site is completely different. So we have a new AV system tonight, so it's going to take some getting used to. So speak into the mics if it's too loud, oh. just adjust them a little bit. But this is a this should hopefully help us in the future for those that are watching on TV. Anyway, so uh, based on the report from the consultants, I re respectfully request a uh, a uh, resolution for the next meeting. Anybody from the public wish to be heard? Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pat, you'll prepare a resolution? Will do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank Mr. you very Mr. Chairman, much. and just so the applicant knows, I mentioned the performance bond. He needs to get me those before we get the resolution done, but he will. He will. He knows to do No, that. we talked about that, and I will get him the uh, amounts the next yep. day or so. Thank you, Rich. No problem. Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, bond return? Yes. Mike? This is on for public hearing for the bond return. I have no comments. Everything's been done to the satisfaction. Rich? All comments have been addressed. Matt? No issues, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Anybody from the board? <coughs> Anybody from the public like to be heard on this? Being there are no comments from the public, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Viscovich, South Lake Boulevard. Special site plan. It's a, it's a dock. Mike? There are four variances required from the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's what I believe he's here to get referral to the ZBA. <coughs> and the wetland permits required, same as last time. Rich? So the application encompasses adding an existing deck, dock, and a shed and a porta potty to this site um, based on the drawing provided. Um, the, initially, the deck was shown off the applicant's property. The applicant has noted that the deck is beyond the applicant's property, but additional details should be provided as to what work is proposed and if any easements are needed for that. The drawing should provide a legend that was prior comment. Applicant noted that it had noted the comment, but no legend was provided. Site plan provided was still very confusing. It should be updated to provide existing and proposed site plans. Um, the short and, uh, sorry, Town of Carmel floodplain is required. Applicant has noted that. 
This should be referred to the Environmental Conservation Board. The applicant has already met with the ECB. Uh, the project is on Route 6 and is a state road and does not believe they need to apply to the New York State DOT. As there is a New York State DOT drainage easement and a pipe on the site, the applicant should confirm with the DOT that no approvals are required. There's a note on the drawing saying that electric is proposed. Details to as, as to how the electric is being installed needs to be provided. In addition, any proposed lighting should be provided along with a lighting spill plan. Uh, additional details should be provided regarding how the proposed features will be installed, the construction sequence. The applicant has noted that and has indicated that the information will be provided if the necessary variances are granted. These details are needed, I believe, before you go to zoning board. Uh, if a parking spot will be installed, location of erosion center control measures being used during construction. Again, the applicant indicated that this need, information is needed and will provide if necessary variances are granted. Um, and there should be information on fencing details. Comment was noted and will be provided if the necessary variances are granted. Pat. Uh, no further planning issues, Mr. Chairman, that the issues Rich raised have to be addressed. The, you can make the referral to the ECB at this point, and the next step would be a referral to the zoning board as well. Joel, would you like to respond to some of the comments? Uh, yes. Uh, which mentioned the fact that some of the improvements are not on our property. Uh, the drawings have been revised, which and as a updated survey has been provided, which is on the other side of this board, which which has a copy of. Uh, there were encroachments from the neighbor with a dock, a, uh, uh, a deck, and a storage building that's all been removed. The survey, which is dated July 19th, and which has in the whole uh, all the consultants have shows that there are no, uh, anything beyond our property lines on the north or the south. Uh, with regard to the uh, comments from the uh, town engineer, uh, we have some major variances that we need, and I felt that, uh, and I think some of the consultants feel that we should go to the zoning board first instead of, uh, you know, going to the, uh, into the minute detail. Variances are uh, not granted. We've got no place, and it doesn't make any sense to spend all the time and money to do all those details if the variances are not granted. So I respectfully ask a referral to the zoning board. This first comment here, <coughs> the deck is shown off the applicant's property. Well, I'd like him to show it. Here it is. It's not, it's not off my property. Off the applicant's property. And, and Rich, you have that most recent drawing? Did, did Joel provide that? or? He provided those drawings, but he said it's the deck is beyond the applicant's property. So that means it's on his property. That's the way I read that. I read it the other way. Joel was saying it's read it a different way. But the original drawings showed the, the original, deck on the property. He's correct. The original drawings from his first set of comments were, 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 not, were off the property. All the encroachments have now been removed. And as you can see, this is the property line. This is the dock. There's nothing on this property, and there's nothing on the answer is there are no encroachments on anyone else's property. And again, uh, as, as Michael said, there is some you know, uh, major variances, and uh, I would like to be able to, to see if the project can go ahead by going to the zoning board. What about the electric? What's proposed for electric? Uh, we're just talking about a, a, a light in the, in the shed, that's all. We're not talking about uh, you know, floodlights and stuff like that. That's all that's involved. If I, if I may, like to, Mike, what were the variances required? Here, there. This one here. Uh, lot front, lot depth, lot area. The dock is, uh, the dock projects more than 25 feet, and uh, we need a one car parking variance. Five variances altogether. What's the fifth one? I only have four. Uh, lot front, lot depth, lot area, dock beyond 25 feet, and uh, parking. The dock is 35 feet, or it's definitely must. beyond 25 30, feet? It's like it's 32 30. feet, yeah. Well, uh, if, if I may, I mean, Please. we're not going to fully vet this here, but <clears throat> excuse me. at the moment, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just curious as to why the dock would need to be this big. Why can't it fit within the, the, the typical requirements? No. The deck, which is this over here, is less than 25 feet. The uh, dock where the boats are going to be moored, this is going out another 20 feet, and actually, uh, if you look at the dock on adjacent properties, it does not go beyond those. So this is over here, so the boat's going to come in here, and the boat's going to come in over here. 
I know I understand that, Joel. I guess my question is this. There's apparently a need for a variance based on the fact that the deck, which include the, the, the extension into the lake, including the deck and I guess the, the dock, if you want to separate those two things, right? That, but the, the, the limitation of 25 feet is based on all of that structure from the water line to from the into high the water lake, mark out. Correct. 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 We had this it's, survey to show, uh, that was one of the comments from the previous meeting, to show the high water mark, which is this dashed line. I, no, Joel, I, I, no, I understand. I, I'm just set, you know, uh, summarizing what I understand about this. So uh, it's proposed more than 25 feet extension into the lake. Does it need to, I mean, why, why do you need that? I mean, it's right, uh, I'm just kind of well, curious. It could be made shorter, couldn't it? Just the fact that there's one neighboring is not, in my opinion, justification for allowing another. This, this is the survey that I was talking about before. This is where the existing deck is. The only thing we're doing here is just filling in this section over here. So again, the boat, this, this dock we're removing, this is the dock on the adjacent property. So all we're asking for, again, this is already here. Just requesting so that, you know, the, the boat, when it, when it, when it comes into the, into the dock here, there'll be a place to get off and get onto the uh, dock from the boat. Now, this is only 20 feet. So you do, in other words, you, 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 you can't, this is already existing, so you, you, can't, you can't bring the boat that's into not, here. That's already existing? Again, look at, look at the, what, you, what I just showed you there is this line over here. So it's already existing. There's a little piece in here where we're going to be adding, and then we're adding the dock coming out of here. That's it. But I guess your question is, is yeah, why that, can't you well, do right, within uh, 25 feet? That's not, that's not what's shown on that drawing. You're saying there's just a little area between, there's a, there's, there's a cross-hatched area, there's, a, there's an area there. Six, yeah, six, that, six, all of that six, is six, new dock. New is wood dock over here. Right. It extend, now turn, it ex, that, that new wood dock, for, oh, just before you do that, that wood dock extends beyond the piece, uh, if that north is up, there's a north piece of a dock existing on the north end of the property, correct? Yeah. No, no, this is the, the deck. Right the, 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 but this, yes. Yes. That's existing. Okay. That's what's shown on the back yeah. side. And you, you and were saying that you're only filling in between. Right. That's not the case. You're extending beyond the existing furthest <laughs> deck and then adding a dock. You're talking about this area over here? Over here? No. Look at, the, isn't the large yellow area there? Isn't that the white area on the, re, on the reverse side? Yeah, that's yes, the same, that's, that's there. Yes. You've just, in, you were indicating earlier, we're just filling in between the two existing. You're not, you're extending beyond the existing. So oh, just okay. for clarification, but okay, nonetheless, yes, yes, the point remains, I guess the question is, is that necessary? But I think that's probably a question for the zoning board to assess whether it's warranted, right? Hardship or otherwise. So I'll let it go. Okay. For you also. Yeah, yeah. it's the planning board's decision to look at that before you send it to the zoning board. And, and, and an issue to bear in mind is that there is an existing dock that's a conforming length that's being removed to build a larger dock. If the existing slip, how long is it? The what? The existing slip that you show on the other side, how, how long is it? From the high water mark, how many feet out is it now? Oh, yeah. the, the, this one over here that's existing, the, the one that we're adding, we're taking this one down and putting this one back, will just about line up. So, right. but, but my question is, how long is the existing one? Not oh, uh, the existing one is from here, from here to here is approximately uh, about 12 feet. Okay, so you're going from 12 feet to, to 20. 20 feet. Correct. It's a big difference. Okay, right. but it's, uh, the board, again, the board should note that that existing dock that he's lining it up with, the shore juts out 20 feet more. So look at the drawing and look at that. The shore juts out according to the drawings. I also, oh God, you want to show, well, I'll just show the board yeah. this real quick. I've been there, I've, just, I've looked at this. So here's the existing shore, and that's where that dock is. Shore goes in, and that's where this dock is. Right. Now he's saying that this one's going to match that one, but it's already going to the shore back here. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's my point. And uh, 
<coughs> okay, so there are two floodlights listed on the property. Yeah, and, and not to get up to the side of the length of the talk, but Joel, I was out there. I know there's that, I, I believe the hill comes down through a, a, some sort of large drain. As you, as you, right, there's a huge uh, grade, approximately. 18-inch concrete pipe that goes underneath. I know exactly. I, I was there. And, okay. And, um, although you really can't see it, I know it's there. I would like to see something on erosion and sediment control because that water probably comes off that hill quite no. you know, extensively. No. Again, I couldn't agree with you more. We, we want to do all okay. that. But again, as as you know, if if we don't get five out of five, we don't have anything to do. We don't have a project. And if the board feels that... Uh, want us to cut that back to, you know, maybe to 15 feet, I don't think we'd have a problem with that. Joel, I just well, have a question. When, when Rich came over and I, he put the plans on it, I, I saw in there floodlight. Say, say what? I saw in the plans when Rich came over, it said floodlights. So a moment ago you said the electric is... Well, the, the new electric is the floodlights, yes. So I, there will be floodlights? Well, they're existing. They're existing? Existing floodlights, right? Floodlights are existing. The lights. Oh, they're okay. They're not electric. They're solar lights. All right. So, so it goes back to my original comment that there should be an existing plan provided to the board, right. showing all the common features that are there now, yeah. then a proposed plan so that the board can see this. It's a comment that I've made twice now. So. Yeah, I, that plan is a lot. There's a lot of open items here. Yeah. I think you need to work with Rich and Mike and the team and clarify several of these items here. Yeah, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to restate my, my question. You know, we have codes, limitations on extensions and so forth, and I mean, generally the, uh, the rule is, right, uh, you have to demonstrate it creates some sort of hardship and, and so forth and that it's warranted and so forth. I mean, at some point we've got to draw a line. If someone... If, if this is, we're doing this because we want, the, the applicant wants, just wants to have more deck space and wants it to be a nice venue, and I get that, okay, but just wanting something, even, even though it's not within the code limitations, that doesn't justify an automatic approval or anything, right? And I, understand and I know you've got to get some zoning change. It, it, you may, this may, as you say, it probably won't pass muster, but we've got to send something to the zoning board, right? Well, and if we send it to them, it suggests that we are okay with what's proposed. I'm, right. I'm not entirely sure. I, I don't believe you can just send it with no comment. You don't have to say do for it or against it. Uh, That's, we have, we, have we refer comments. it to the zone board, yeah. right? That's we right. Refer so to the zone board. Can we have it with the negative, a you, positive, or not? You can convey whatever message you want to convey to the zoning board. I don't think, personally, in my opinion, we can vote on. But I, I, I don't feel this is ready to go to the zoning board. Uh, until some of this is addressed, based on all the comments here, and then we'll send a better package off to the zoning board someday when and if we're ready. Okay. Yeah, let, I, I agree. I, I would like Matt. to see. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We do need a more detailed uh, plan. Yeah, we, we need so a, we a separate existing a, existing plan and proposed plan would be much clearer to be okay. at a minimum. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Taco Bell amended site plan. Mike. Provide a detail of all signage, the large accent wall as you can see on the bottom drawing in the left, is a sign by definition. I need a detail of that as well. I only see a response to Rich Franzetti's comments in your written reply. Um, don't know why there was no written response to my comments, so. Okay. Rich. As the board may recall, this is the reoccupation of the former Friendly's restaurant located at 1081 Stonely. 
uh, to support Taco Bell in half the building and a second run restaurant use. In the other half, no change to the building footprint is being proposed and the existing parking lot will be reused. Primary changes in, uh, involve installation of a drive through window, traffic lane for Taco Bell, and some reconfiguration of the existing parking lot. The property is located in Carmel Sewer District and Carmel Water District 2. Uh, the engineering department offered comments regarding to the to referral to the ECB and Carmel Fire Department and permits from the ECB. They have acknowledged those comments. They've met with the ECB and have received a permit, uh, permit number 951, which expires in June of 2020. The applicant will work with the department to determine if, the, if a requirement is needed as the wetland delineation validation from the New York, State, New York State DEC is still in process if they need anything from the DEC. Um, they, uh, there was a question about the grease trapping. The applicant has acknowledged the comment and will provide that information. And the applicant is aware that if a uh, public improvements, performance bond, and engineering fee must be established for the work. Pat. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chairman, if you remember, the applicant had made some modifications to the layout of the parking lot to address some of our original concerns with respect to this. At the last meeting, your real issue related to the facade of the building and how to integrate the two tenant spaces into one. The applicant has been working with our architectural consultant, Mr. Malusi, is here this evening to help further that conversation. So really, I think that was the primary issue last time they were before you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Paul Dumont. I'm a senior designer with JMC. Uh, we are the civil engineers on the project. Um, with me tonight are Raghav and Samir Patel, the applicants, uh, their legal counsel, Daria Shafazeda of Harris Beach, and uh, my associate, Ross Richardson, who's also been working on the project. Uh, so as Pat stated, uh, since we were last before you, uh, we have not had an opportunity to coordinate the building's architecture uh, with WMW, your, your board's architectural consultant. Um, we had a sit-down meeting, and uh, we've had uh, multiple conversations back and forth. And uh, the design has gone through several iterations, and we're very pleased with uh, what we're presenting you tonight. Um, we've put a lot of thought into the building's architecture, and uh, we made some significant changes to the plans. And really, uh, what we're trying to do, um, as you had directed us to, is provide uh, consistency and continuity uh, throughout the building, uh, in addition to trying to evoke the character uh, your board was looking for in the Route 6 corridor. Uh, we feel that the uh, current uh, revisions made to the architecture uh, marry uh, the contemporary look of the current Taco Bell prototype with some of the features of the existing building and uh, some of the features of uh, the project that your board, the projects that your board liked in the area. Um, we feel that we, uh, we balance the Taco Bell corporate needs with the request of your boards, and, uh, and what you see today is, is a happy medium, so. Um, we're in receipt of a memorandum from uh, WMW regarding the architecture. Um, we concur with uh, WMW's statement that the building has a, a quaintness that will add to the streetscape along the Route 6 corridor. <clears throat> You'll also note that there were several uh, technical comments. Um, about five of those are uh, site-related uh, that uh, we have already addressed with our site plans, and uh, the remainder uh, the project architect will be working to address. So um, at this time, if you have any questions, uh, we'd be happy to answer them, but uh, it is our hope that your board would consider uh, moving us to public hearing tonight. So. Anyone uh, from the board? And Vincent's here also if you have any questions for you. Vincent, would you mind giving us a little overview of what you worked on, sure. please? So, you know, the building that was first presented was a very contemporary looking building and the, the idea was to try to get this to be a little bit more uh, in what the board is looking for and that somewhat New England style. It's difficult to do with the corporate look of a Taco Bell. Um, so we worked out some of the details that were not present in the uh, original design that was presented, such as the trim, raising the, the, uh, the stone wall, capping that off, and a couple of the small little details um, uh, in the stone, the stone work that was in there, um, just to get it to be a little bit more detail uh, to, to get that feel. So I think it, I think it married well um, in, in, in what the outcome was. 
If I remember correctly, Taco Bill's taken over 60% or so of the building. 50%, 60%? Yeah, about. Yep. Somewhere in that area. <clears throat> what do you look at with the rest of the building, known as not a tenant there <coughs> now? Well, the, one of the concerns we had when we, when we met was to try to make this look a unified building, which it didn't before. Right. And the, one of the main elements is this trim color that, go, that was going, it stopped here. And, you know, one of the things I insisted on is that it continue on and it all look like one unified building, which we, we've gotten that done. Also, with the canopy details and the lighting that goes around, it's all, it, it's a cohesive uh, design, in my, my opinion. What are the colors of the building? We have this board here uh, just detailing uh, some examples of the finish for you. So, uh, on the trim, uh, we have a, a gray color. Um, for the banding, uh, we, we lightened up that purple tone a little bit. Uh, it's a Sherman William color uh, clematis. Um, and then the rest of the building, um, the uh, EFIS finish uh, will have a, a, a lighter, um, I guess, gray or off white color. Um, the brick, existing brick on the building, is going to be painted uh, this darker gray color, gauntlet gray. And the tower is getting a, a stone finish, as you see there. But it's all like charcoals. Yeah. Okay. Did I, I'm sorry to miss it. Did you mention anything about signage? Um, I did not. Uh, so with regard to signage, um, the project architect is working on developing that. Um, we didn't want to have them go too far without uh, your general blessing on, on the architecture and the direction that we're going. Um, so if you guys are uh, comfortable with this, uh, we'll be prepared to submit a signage package. Questions from the... I just I would just ask you. So you feel comfortable that this is consistent with um, the, the theme that we're going with with the town? And I, I after going through with them, I think this is with, with the corporate look that Taco Bell has. I think this is as, as far as we'll get with it, unless there's you know you're starting out with a, the building that exists today. Friendlies is a more New England type building than this. Yeah. All right. They, and that was my first question, can we just stay with the friendlies? And it was, that was not rejected. Um, and working with corporate firms, I know that this is difficult for them to get some of the details we've even asked for now. So I, I think what, what we have here is a, as, a, as a design is as close as we can get to it. I yeah. also just want to, I, I would like to see samples of this, not just paper uh, pictures yep. of it. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. Have you because seen it, you know, when we when we do this on the computer, it looks great, but yeah. sometimes the touch and feel of things are better. So, will you be able to get our architect samples? So yes. We yep. Them? Yeah, we were uh, working to try to get samples for tonight's meeting. Um, a lot of that stuff is in the mail, so uh, we will then provide samples to you and uh, <coughs> and I guess just to your office or. I, I think it would be good to have for the public hearing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Time okay, so we'll also. be prepared to bring a sample board for the public hearing. And Paul, could you also describe the accent wall by the drive through Yes, please. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, Pat, you're referring to this accent wall here? Yeah, we can't, we can't yet. That's the one. Okay, so uh, that accent wall is uh, part of the Taco Bell prototype. Um, it's along the side of the building um, that faces away from the street side. It's on the drive-through side, and uh, it's it's basically just a mural that's applied to the to the building. Um, it, it's just like a, a graphic that shows some Taco Bell sauces. So, is that, that optional? Yeah, it's a sign. The reason I say you'll need variances for more than one sign, yeah. and it looks like you're going to have. That one, and is there a call in for the takeout also? Uh, a menu board? Menu something board, like yes. That? Yes. Does that have Taco Bell written all over it also? Um, we'll take a look at that. I, I don't think it's branded uh, like that. So you may not get that variance, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's. That's understood. a variance, because that's a sign. Okay. Okay. Uh, understood. Um, from the looks of it, uh, it's a complete departure, obviously, from what's there. Um, is, is the intent to uh, 
refit the exist any of the existing structure, or is this a total teardown? Um, just re with regard to the facade, I mean, obviously, so the the existing roof is going to be taken down, um, but most of you know the uh, brick that you see outlined on the plans that's existing that's, brick that's going oh, to be is. painted. Yes. Okay. Um, and the rest of it is at but the new window facade. structure is completely different and, and, and right. so forth. Okay. Right. And part of what we tried to do with the window trim too is give it a little character um, there as well. So, and, the, and you said the brick is going to be, the existing brick will be uh, surfaced and then painted gray. Right. Okay. Now just, just out of curiosity, I know we've asked you and you guys really said you haven't, you don't know, but often you see Taco Bell's married with another business. Um, right. Do you have any indication as to who the other tenant might be? Um, not at this time, but uh, there are no plans um, to have a, a, you know, like a, a KFC sister store or anything like that. So we have a KFC. That's a separate. I believe that's a separate um, franchise, right? So I don't know, but I know that when I see KFCs, often I see them with right, you know right. another business. So, but yeah, regardless regardless of who the tenant may be, the that's not going to change the look proposed here. I mean, it's just going to be whatever that tenant sign is going to say, whoever yep. it's going to be. Correct. Yeah. Unless they choose to come back to the board. Uh, well, yeah, they would have to at that point. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 I mean, proximity-wise, how do you think this is going to mesh with the already existing McDonald's? They're, they're to totally different brandings and, and, and looks, so it doesn't, it's, it's separate and distinct from it. And we have the McDonald's and we have the, the gas station. The brand new gas station. Um, yeah. I do just want to note, too, uh, the finish, the stone finish that's going to be on the tower here um, is somewhat similar to, right. or somewhat <coughs> similar to what the McDonald's has. <coughs> And what the cocoa farms will have. Um, cocoa farm. It's not the exact same stone, obviously, but. So, yeah, the brick that's being that's existing that you're going to be saving. Is that would that be the proposed material if Taco Bell was building this from the ground up? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I don't believe so. Okay. Um, this is, you know, we have a little bit of flexibility that, uh, given that this is an existing building. Um, yeah, I guess I, I mean, my, I'm just kind of getting to, which everyone is probably also understanding here. This, I understand the branding, and you, you know, you you, you want to stand out, you want to be unique because you want to be noticed, um, and at the same time, we don't want to have 75 different looking buildings, which we pretty much already have. I'm not, I'm not too fond of painted brick myself, but nonetheless, it's not, not about me, so. Um, is there, and this is the prototype that they're working with in all their newer, their updated yeah, branding. Yeah, scheme. I mean, what you see here is definitely very far from the current prototype. Um, we were given a lot of um, flexibility, and uh, you know, especially as you know, we've revised the design, so. Um, Are those the signature colors for the prototypes now? Um, for the most part, yeah. I, the, I believe the purple is, is a is a little bit lighter here with what we ended up um, with what I we ended like up with here. A little lighter than the uh, prototype purple, but uh, I, I think, think for the most part this is fairly consistent. Usually it's a brighter purple, and I'm happy that it's a muted, more muted, so it's mm -hmm. toned down, more of a natural. Yeah blends in a little, it's not screaming out at us. Um, yeah. I, I will say that the existing building is the charm that we're looking for, or that we are used to and that we like and that we're trying to keep. So I know that we keep harping on keeping the brick and you're keeping the brick but you're painting over it. I, I, I know this is a big change from what you originally started with, but I, I still feel like we need some more of that charm. I, and, I uh, need to you care know, about we, that building. You know, for uh, you know, for our clients, um, you know, the existing architecture that was there was was true, um, you know, corporate friendlies architecture. 
and uh, it, it wasn't um, you know consistent with what you know the brand wants to see and, and what our clients want to see. So um, you know we really uh, you know as I said we really did our best to to kind of marry you know the, the two and uh, you know some of you know some of what we did with the trim we tried to get a little bit of that character out of it too. So um, but I, I understand. Is there another Taco Bell around with that accent wall? Uh, I'm not sure, but we could look into that. Okay. The accent walls on the back, right? Rear, rear uh, elevation. The accent walls on the rear elevation, right? That is the, the uh, side. side elevation. So that's along the drive-through side. Um, oh, that's facing. I see. Okay. Um, don't have a site plan. No, no, I, I can grab. I, I understand. I, I, I misunderstood the two overhangs. It's the left side of the building if you're facing right. it from the roof. Okay, so the overhang. Yeah, on, all right, got it. Um, so you would yeah, see that coming little, down Stone That's pretty. Yeah, you would. You're going to see so that coming down It's pretty in your face. Yeah. If you're driving along Route 6, you will, won't see it. If you're driving Stone, uh, up on Stonely on Avenue, you won't see it. But if you're driving down toward Route 6. Right, from on Stonely, right, you're going right. to see that. Is that a mural that gets changed often? Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure. Because I know sometimes it gets changed seasonally. You know, they will go through different brandings over time. And right. You noted that this was a significant departure from what Taco Bell is typically yes. is now trying to pursue. What parts of this are atypical? Is EFAS a standard material they're looking at? Um, EFAS is a standard material, but uh, really it's it's the, the tower material that we chose is a, is a departure. Uh, it's the trim that you see. Um, some of the, the finer details are, are different. So um, really the, the first concept that we had submitted was a real, you know, a true a prototype, you know, their okay. current prototype, so. Will there be any barrier between that mural and Stone Lake uh, in terms of landscape? Um, there is some existing vegetation there. Uh, the lot that's, um, I believe the, the credit union <coughs> is the next adjoining parcel, if I remember correctly. Um, there is some vegetation that's there. You know, it's, it's mostly deciduous. Um, so, you know, certain times of the year, it might be screened well, but um, you know, other times of the year. Is there screen. any way to upgrade the screening? Uh, there are limited opportunities along the frontage and along the side of the property yeah. for yeah. plantings. Uh, we could certainly look at it. I uh, can't make any promises, though. Um, we'll be talking about the, the accent wall, though, um, too, uh, just in terms of signage. As Mike pointed out, um, you know, this, if, uh, if this will be interpreted as signage, you know, most certainly will, will require a variance. And, <coughs> And that's something we have to consider. So, yeah, it certainly seems to fly in the face of the more muted palette you've accepted here. So, it yeah. seems a little Underst understood. Yeah, I, I, I just think that mural is too in your face. <coughs> just whatever compromises you did to address the town's planning board's concerns get kind of mm -hmm. washed away with that mural. Yeah. And there are still a few things we're asking for yeah. from you know indicate where all the roof equipment's gonna be, how it's gonna be screened, yeah. right? Uh, the landscape layout, the signage, the samples of the materials. Yep. Uh, so there's still quite a few to-dos here. Yeah, understood. And as I, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, um, about five of those things are, are site issues that you know are, are detailed on our site plans, and uh, we'll be working with Vinny uh, to try to get those issues resolved. And. Uh, uh, with regard to the architecture, um, you know, the project architect will be working uh, to address those concerns. Uh, there, there will be, um, I guess, I'm just trying to think of the right word, a, a parapet wall, I guess, that will uh, hide that equipment uh, that you're referencing. Um, we would just like to see it. Right? Okay. That the lo you know, in terms of the actual equipment that will be on the roof, um, yeah, that's a, a working drawing type level of detail. So but we can certainly provide uh, details on the screening. How high would the parapet wall be? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, we can have the architect uh, clarify in their next Because I know once before, uh, it may have been even in McDonald's, um, we had to actually have the fire department, once there was a parapet wall, they had to um, run it by the fire chief to make sure that there was, they would be able to access the roof. I, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but okay. we'll have to yeah. look into that. You may have to do the drop distance over the top of the parapet to the surface, but... Um, Quite a few things. Let's see. What's the 
I think they need to, to work with our consultants and, and to get the issues, you know, whittled down a bit, um, especially as, as Vincent was saying, we want to look at the, um, the finishes. That's an important thing, at least to this board. We, we've always taken a proactive approach with that. So um, I wouldn't feel comfortable moving it on until we get these other issues resolved. Understood. Um, you know, just from our perspective, you know, a lot of what Vinny's outlining are, are things that are you know, very easily addressed by, by our team. Uh, you know, we feel confident that we can, you know, turn these things around and address them um, fairly quickly. So. Um, you know, I understand your concerns, but... We can get you on the August 14th agenda. That's the next meeting, August 14th. I mean, it's two weeks. We don't... I know you're, you're anxious, um, but I, I tend to agree that we've got some due diligence to do here. Yeah, we don't... Sorry. We don't even know if they need variances yet. We don't have their sign package or anything, yeah. so... I, I just... From the dialogue, I, I'm tending to agree with Ray and Kim. We're, we're, we're eager as well. I mean, anytime new business wants to move in, it's a great thing, and we're eager. Um, and we do meet every two weeks, so it's it's not going to take that long. You can work with the consultants, and you'll be back in two weeks. You know, let's do that. Okay. Right. Understood. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Vincent, thanks for your help. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Holman Towers, Lake Cassie. Chairman and members of the board, Robert Cordioso with the law firm of Snyder and Snyder on behalf of Homeland Towers and New York SMSA Limited Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless. Uh, since we last met, we did revise the materials in a number of different ways uh, on this particular application. As you may recall, we originally uh, proposed a 180 foot tower. We've reduced the height now again down to 140 feet, which we think brings it to a height uh, where we can reasonably offer a tree option, a monopine option as part of the uh, proposal. And what we've done is we've revised the visual resource evaluation from Saratoga Associates to show uh, both of those options. Uh, we've revised the visual, uh, the environmental assessment form, uh, all of the other supplemental reports uh, regarding the 140 foot height. We submitted the DC report that came out and looked at the site and had no problems uh, with any of the issues related to uh, uh, a, a allegation of fill at the property. Uh, we also submitted a, a revised site plan and an engineering letter, and most importantly, we submitted a full report um, in response to your RF consultant's report. We also supplied uh, some specific data regarding drop calls and access failures that I think was requested by the board some time ago. So that was all submitted as part of the package, and we'd be happy to answer any questions the board has tonight on those. Thank you. Mike? Um, applicant proposes to add a 140-foot cell tower to an existing residential property off Grove Falls Road in Mayapak. Um, note the FCC law allows an increase of 10% or 20 feet to the height of this uh, pole without any approval from the planning board, ZBA, or any change to seeker. Variances require for the three, the same three that it's been, the height of the tower, two-way aisle width, and the fence height. And I spoke to the owner of the property. He has a letter from the DEC, I want to say about the fill that was brought in, and it was clean, but I don't have the actual report yet, but as soon as I get that, I will read that. And that report, that just so you know, that was in the package, so we have to I get I just didn't see it yet. I didn't read it yet. Okay. Thank you. Rich? So as, as identified, uh, it's a now 140-foot monopole, which may be a uh, monopine uh, with a fence 36-foot by 100-foot compound for related equipment along an access drive. Referrals would be warranted to Maypac Falls Volunteer Fire Department, New York State, New York City DEP, and New York State DEC. Applicant has acknowledged the need for these referrals. Just want to make the applicant aware that it's up to them to go and do these referrals. I think they're aware of that already. Um, permits would be needed for stormwater with the state. 
New York City DEP possibly for a stream crossing and ECB, the applicant uh, is aware of those particular, um, I said it hasn't been acknowledged, but I meant to say it has been acknowledged by the applicant, they're aware of them. The disturbance is 12,750 square feet, a little lower than last time, um, and therefore the applicant requires coverage under the New York State General Permit. Um, they will need to provide a SWIP, which they essentially have as part of the Erosion Center of Control Plan on the document, but they will need to do the other uh, ministerial type of work, which is an NOI MS4 acceptance form. Once the overall, if the overall, and once the overall package is approved, that would be the SWIP unto itself, and then they submit the information to the state. Um, any public improvements, um, a performance bond associated engineering fee would need to be established. The applicant just needs to be aware of that. Um, so now a little more detailed comment. So um, again, based on our code, uh, the, which is uh, the maximum height is 50 feet. The applicant must provide justification for exceeding the maximum height cap. Even with relief, the maximum height permit is 50% 50, 50 of the 50 feet, which should be 75. They're proposing 140 foot tower. Um, again, this is the whole location five priority. Um, so actually, I'm sorry, the location five requirements of 15662L and 15662O3 um, have been acknowledged by the applicant. Ultimately, this information is provided and reviewed by Planning Board Council. The biggest change, I think, on the site right now um, is, other than the 140-foot tower, which is 40-foot lower, uh, the previous site plan submitted call for electric service to the site to be installed underground. The current site plan calls for electric service to be installed on and through seven poles, which now pass directly in front of the neighboring property. Typically, re the board requires that all utility be placed underground. Um, so the, the applicant had it underground, now they don't, so they should probably just explain that to the board ultimately. Um, general, big general comments, sill fence, stabilized construction and entrance, details were there, they just must be in conformance with state requirements. Graphic representation of all vehicle movements through the site should be provided to I illustrate sufficient space exists to maneuver the vehicles, and all turning radii associated with that should be provided graphically. Thanks, Mr. Pat. Uh, I have no additional comments from my prior memo, Mr. Chairman. I would reinforce Rich's comment that I can't recall an instance where you have not required utility connections um, to be provided underground. Um, so that's typically something that you would require of an applicant. You have been waiting um, until this application matured through the review of your um, radio frequency consultant, Ron, to obtain a project that is fixed. It now is. There's a height for that antenna, so you have the ability now to go to public hearing, commence public review, and make this app and refer this application to the Zoning Board of Appeals to see if that height can be addressed through the Zoning Board. So we now have a project that's sort of fixed and understandable. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, just to, regarding those utilities, I think that's an excellent point. While it's not required by the code, we don't have any problem putting it underground. The reason we showed it above the ground is we just want to show the option, particularly with respect, we'll make a referral to the uh, ECB if you see that fit tonight. Um, we don't think that even the utilities on the ground would trigger uh, any type of approval or above ground, but we wanted to be able to show that we have that option, uh, and we're happy to put them on the ground as long as the ECB doesn't have a problem with that or any of the other we would environmental agencies. We would prefer on the ground, especially when you think about seven poles. And we're happy to accommodate that request, as I said, as long as it's, as long as it's consistent and, and acceptable to the other agencies. So where, where's the differentiator, where's the decision between a monopole, if you will, and a tree pole? Where, where, do, where does that come into play? Is it just solely aesthetics or is it a certain height that you feel one works better than the other? So it's, it's an aesthetic issue and I think if you remember the, the first time we were ever here, the question I think, I think the building inspector had, quite frankly, was why one application right. and not the other? And our answer was at 180 feet, we thought it looked a little goofy. Yep. Well, no, I remember the conversation. Yeah. So now we think at 140 feet, I think, and I think the visual renderings bear that out. Uh, now it starts to get into context with the surrounding, uh, the surrounding foliage. We're at 180 feet. We thought it did. We was out positioned at 180 feet um, with the additional loading of the branches, the size that the pole would have to be, the additional width of the branches, increased visibility, particularly at that height. At 140 feet. We think that it could go either way, and we're happy to offer both alternatives, and we would leave that to the discretion uh, of the planning board as you see fit. But we did do the visual renderings, and we made some accommodations on the plans 
For example, your code requires a certain number and certain size trees. If it's a monopine, a monopine, we show that we can fit those on the plan. We show where they would go. We also show the details for the monopine. We show the visual renderings for the monopine uh, as well in, in the rendering. So it's really, you know, I don't want to say subjective because while aesthetics, some people might think is subjective, they're very objective. Um, it has to be based on objective criteria. But we think either the monopole or the monopine uh, is an application that we're comfortable with in this case. This I spell check picks too. Checks. Would the uh, tree limbs that go on the monopine, would they be visible as tree limbs from all yeah. viewpoints? So I think when you look at the visual renderings, um, the places where it's most visible, <coughs> the tree will be visible and it will be less visible where it's less visible. And I know that sounds obvious, but the point being is that when you look at the one or two locations where it's most visible, there are other pine trees in, in the context of those renderings. So therefore, we think that it does work. If there were no pine trees in those renderings, either in the foreground, the background, the side ground, we, we wouldn't necessarily be inclined to offer the tree. In this case, we thought it did work. Uh, I'm thinking of it, and, and please educate, educate me if I've got it wrong, I'm thinking of it as somebody viewing the tree from the side that doesn't have the, the, the tree limb dressings on it. It'll have, it'll, have, um, it'll have the tree limbs around 360 it's degrees. Really, okay, and I ask that question because it's probably premature, but on the Dixon site, it looks like only one side no it's all it's all around it is all correct yeah so will you be revising I guess these are called elevations um, mm -hmm. to show what what this will look like it, it, it would look it would we don't have a problem doing that if the board if the board is inclined to go with the trait we're happy to make that change we wanted to leave that option open and that's why we did it in the visual renderings quite frankly the plans when they show the branches it doesn't really show much. It shows the general location of the branches, which would be consistent with what we did in Dixon. Um, but we're happy to make the change in the plans. I, I, I'm just concerned about setting a record that what we're eventually going to prove if we go for the trees. Totally is understood. That was in the record. And, and maybe that gets flushed out a little bit at the public here when we hear yeah. input from the public as to what, what they would prefer. And, and, and I, think that's a, I think that's an excellent idea. And in addition to that, going to the building inspector's comments, uh, we filled out the form. We're planning to meet to have the form initialed uh, in the very near future to make the, I believe it's the August 8th filing deadline to get on the August meeting to the zoning board. So while the zoning board is, you know, is um, performing um, a variance review, this board is the lead agency under Seeker. So there might be some there might be some feedback from the zoning board as well with respect to the two alternatives. But ultimately, I think the design will be in this board's uh, prerogative, and and I think waiting until the feedback from the public hearing. We're happy to amend the plans after that in, in whichever way the board's leaning. We would want the documentation to show on the ground. We would want that on, on the record to show you that the utilities run up on the ground. Sure, and, and like I said, what we'll also do is we'll, we'll get with the ECB and make sure that that doesn't trigger some other approval that they're not comfortable with. Quite frankly, we think even with the underground utilities, given the distance to the wetlands, we're not going through any wetlands given the fact that they're basically across the street and on neighboring properties, and we would run the utilities uh, on, the, on the access drive, we don't see any impact from the underground utilities. So I'm fairly confident with that, but we will certainly you know, work through that process as well. Can you also put a note on the map that when you put the antenna in there that they will be painted to match the tree in some way, camouflage? So we'll even do a step better than that. We'll, we'll do what's called, um, they put a sock on the antenna. Which is which matches the okay. which matches. It's just that I'm looking at some right here antenna. that have the white antenna inside the tree. Yeah, totally get it. <laughs> it just looks yeah, like so we'll, we'll do the socks. We'll white put antenna the in the tree. You know. Rob, you said a sock on the antenna. It slides right. Yeah, it's hole. basically a it's basically a covering on the antenna rather than just painting it. Can, can you speak to the circumstances upon which the uh, tower would be extended? It's a good point. So. Um, it, it, I'm sorry, it, yeah, the question was circumstances under which the tower might be extended. So what we, what we put in the documentation from our expert is that we believe at this height there's space for Verizon Wireless and at least one other carrier below. We'll also design the tower to be able to accommodate other carriers below, but we'll also accommodate and design the tower to be extended if necessary. 
And what the FCC has regulations on is called an eligible facilities request. And there's actually six criteria. So the tower couldn't just be extended without any approvals. It would still require approval from the town by whatever process the town has for that, but it has to meet six criteria. And the criteria includes it can be no more than 20 feet in extension, it can be no more uh, wider than it currently is, uh, it can be no more than a number of equipment cabinets at the base, you can't expand the compound, you can't defeat the stealthing of the tree, so you couldn't, you couldn't just extend it without complying with what the stealthing requirements were for the tree, uh, and also you couldn't, um, you couldn't invalidate a prior condition of approval. Let's say you required certain landscaping and things of that, but that couldn't, that couldn't be overridden. So there are actually six criteria under the federal law, uh, and the town would have an opportunity to review any proposal to extend it based on that criteria. So you're saying that based on our law right now that we have, if you wanted to go up another 10 feet, you would have to go back to this board? Well, it would have to go back to the town. How the town processes that is up to the town. The town could process it through a building permit application or they could process it uh, through the planning board, but there is a certain time frame to do that and there's certain criteria regarding that. But we're not proposing to extend the tower. What we would, though, do, and we think this is good planning, is we would put the money into the foundation and the tower design so that if you ever did need it, so if another company came and said, we want to build a new tower, you would have to make them look at this one first. To go first, you know, on the tower, and if not extend it, we would build in that planning ability. So, so I think that it's pretty clear by now that, you know, part of the objections you've heard and the concerns from the community and the board as well is the height. Sure. And I'm not sure how well it's going to go over at a public meeting when they realize that the law allows you to pretty much on your own, I know there's six criteria, but pretty much decide, hey, look, we need to increase the height of this thing. Um, if, I, if, I, if I understand it correctly, isn't it about eight, the law says 10% you can increase it? It's 10% of a maximum of 20 feet. Right. So 10% of this would be another 14 feet because it's 140 feet? So 154 total. Okay. So my question is this. I mean, would you guys be willing to, as a stipulation to the approval, would you guys be willing to say we won't increase the height? I, I, don't, I, I don't think so at this stage. And the reason for that is I think it would be bad planning. I think it would be bad planning for us, and I think it would be bad planning for the town because not being able to increase the height, I think, might handcuff everybody in the future if someone did prove that they needed the height. We'll still build the tower to be able to support co-locators below the Verizon antennas. We believe at least one and maybe more might be able to go below. At least one, we believe. So we'll design the tower to be able to support those antennas. We'll put the branches there. We'll put, you know, we'll build in to the tower design to be able to do that. It would only be, if necessary, for them to be able to go up. And if necessary would mean if they could really prove they needed a higher height, they would technically be able to, under federal law, get another tower. And I don't think anyone wants that. We don't want it. I don't think the town wants it. I don't think your code allows for it. But under federal law, they would be permitted to do that. So I do understand what you're saying is that that is the federal law, but it's the federal law also that you can't prohibit service of another carrier. So all we're trying to do is build in that future ability. But we will encourage the co-location below the Verizon antennas by building the tower to support that. Ron, do you have anything you want to mention or anything new news? Um, if I may, yeah. Sure, please. <clears throat> uh, Introduce I think, yourself too, please. Uh, hello, uh, members of the board. My name is Ronald Grafe. I'm a licensed professional engineer in New York State, and you've retained me to review the radio frequency application associated with the uh, monopole or monopine. Uh, I've gone, you know, there were two reports that I've submitted to you on this, and the first one, uh, I, it was obvious that uh, the original height was significantly overreached. And then they submitted more information that I reviewed on the uh, July 26th, the most recent one. And those results demonstrated uh, more accurately the drive test that 146 was probably the minimum height required uh, for their, their antennas. I'm sorry, 136. It's a 140-foot tree, and the antennas are down beneath that was probably the minimum height necessary to do that. Although I do point out in the one report, I do say that uh, you know, notwithstanding all of this, that uh, it's more than adequate. It's, it's very good coverage that they're getting. The issue that you face, though, is that with uh, today there are four carriers, and tomorrow there may be only three. We're not sure. But um, this poll could theoretically have no trouble doing three carriers at 
136, 126, and 116, uh, because carriers have different needs, and being that those carriers are not here before you, you have no idea what their coverage is. You can only hope. And this issue with the, uh, the ability of the carrier to increase the height of the, the pole is correct. Uh, Attorney Gorioso is correct with, with the test. Uh, that has to be done. The, the interesting thing here that you face, though, is that you're designing this as a faux tree, a monopine. And if it were to be increased, you'd have to change all of the branches to change the shape of the tree. If you didn't, you'd get a hutch where it just goes straight up then, and you don't want that. You want it to continue to look like a conifer. So with that in mind then, just remember that. Uh, Homeland, and I'll just tell you, recently did an application after a court thing, and they agreed to limit the height to whatever was finally approved, not to increase it. Uh, if you did that, then granted, no matter what happened, there could possibly be another pole. But if you're worried about this possibility of 14 additional feet, then perhaps they can stipulate then they'll just stop there and then uh, the board will take his chance that another applicant may come into town. Uh, technically, uh, being that there is no demonstration of other coverage from this poll, although most of the carriers now are using pretty much the same frequencies, it's all going to be the same. The question is, are they using the same sites? That evidence is not in the record. But I, it's my opinion that the 136 was the just about the minimum height. At 126, it began to lose in areas, and the last thing you don't want to do then is to have them come back with another poll at another time. So it's a balancing test for you guys, and remember, if, if you do consider raising the branch structure, and that's something your planner can probably talk more about than I, but will clearly have to change if you want to keep the, the correct look. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Education. Thoughts on the board? Yeah, I have, I have just one other question for our special Mr. Grafe there, um, and I don't want to overlap these, but there was a there was an observation in uh, one of your reports for one of these two that talked about the leaf attenuation numbers and the discrepancy in the two used different different numbers. Could you elaborate a little bit on that and help us understand uh, that? Uh Thank you. Uh, an interesting situation, dueling in engineers or people who put these uh, applications together. Uh, when, when drive tests are made in the winter when there are no leaves on trees, uh, the attenuation of the signal is, is uh, only free space attenuation. Nothing is getting in the way between the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna. When drive tests are made in the spring, summer, because of the leaves, and typically we're talking about deciduous leaves, we're not talking about coniferous leaves, the ones that are the maples and oaks that are fat and juicy. Uh, those leaves tend to attenuate the signal. And she had done this uh, quoting a very famous uh, ancient uh, report about what leaf attenuation because of scattering is. And she came up with this 8 dB number. And then she said, well, but in some places it was higher, in some places it was lower. And I pointed out in my report, well, if that's the case then, why didn't you show us that so we could, look at, we could look at the standard deviation and see what the attenuation really was? My professional opinion in countless applications, and the record is clear on this, just follow them, is six decibels, six dB, I believe is sufficient for leaf attenuation. The two dB, what she did then, she made the coverage uh, basically shrink by just a touch, but typically it shrinks on the outer edge, not on the inner edge. It's, it shrinks where the signal is weak. So by cranking in that additional 2 dB, she then made the coverage look just a little bit smaller. Not significantly, but it did, and that's where the, the little uh, uh, argument was. And then it was hilarious because then in the next application that's before your board, which is the, uh, the Dixon Avenue, she says, well, because we measured it at this time of year, it's only going to be 5 dB. And I said, gee, that's too bad she didn't agree with me last time. Had she used 5 dB, the coverage <laughs> would have been <laughs> a lot better. And then I pointed out, yeah, I would have settled for 6, though. It, it really is uh, a matter, then, of significant figures, how close you want to examine these things, how precise. And you will note in my report, I say these drive tests are nearly the gold standard. They are not the gold standard. 
what the gold standard is, is when you build it and operate it, if it works with people with their phones, that's when it works. So when you do these things, they tend to be a little more conservative to allow for people that keep their phones on the seat or on the floor in a pocket as opposed to on the dashboard. And, and that's something that, that you can expect. But from your point of view of a board, you're saying, we'd like a little shorter. I can appreciate that. Um, so it's, it's a matter of, of, uh, of significant figures and what matters to you and your planner with respect to is it better to have two poles or one pole if the one pole is just a little taller than you really would like it. Would this system work for Verizon at 126 feet? Probably. Uh, the evidence was that it didn't look terrible. It wasn't, it wasn't perfect, but it didn't look terrible. But where it falls apart then three is with three other, three other carriers. Now, if there are only two more carriers after the Sprint T-Mobile merger, if that happens, uh, and then, well, maybe DISH will be a carrier. Well, you know, I, I don't think your board will be the same board by the time that happens that they're building sites in Carmel. Uh, so let's just concern ourselves with Verizon, AT&T, and the Sprint T-Mobile if that happens. So there's three carriers. So 136, 126, 116. It works. It works. 126, 116, 106. Time will tell. Now there's the case then when you clearly say, okay, we'll give you another uh, 10 feet you can add onto this to stick it up. But uh, as an engineer and looking at this with the precision associated with everything, I cannot, I can only say it's my professional opinion to draw a line in the sand and say this is as high as it can go. It, it's, it's a little bit subjective, believe it or not, because of the vagaries of radio frequency propagation. But I'm, I'm delighted that you noticed that because uh, I, I always try to add, when I disagree with someone, I make sure that they know that I disagree, and then I'll remember it next time that I've disagreed with them. So when you see that next report, you'll see that, that little, uh, yes. little tussle, okay? So if I may follow up. So <coughs> just for my general clarification, the attenuation due to leaf cover, the, the reason there was a difference is be, that, that they, they added additional attenuation uh, to account for the leaves that hadn't yet fleshed out, come out, right? Sure. So uh, they, the reason there are two different numbers is because they took those assessments at different times of year. Is that accurate? Oh, you mean between the two reports? Yeah. Well, in the second report, she says, well, we made our measurements in April. Okay. Now, to me, the difference between April and whenever the other, and, and July, are pretty slim. The, uh, okay. the oaks and the maples come out pretty quickly up here, especially if it's rained a lot. So that, that really was, you know what, it, to me that was a, 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 why she did that, it was just once again. Uh, but in, in that case then, actually it worked for the board because she put in less attenuation, the signal looked a little bit better. better right. Yeah, so that's what, now had she done it the other way, then I would have been right on it and say, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to have one consistent leaf attenuation. And, and in this area uh, where these <coughs> sites are, I mean, if you look, uh, they're, they're pretty significantly uh, uh, covered with trees. Okay. And I, I don't want to beat it to death. Sure. So one follow-up question. Well, the significance of this then, as you early, earlier stated, was the, the, the size of the coverage area, right? Correct. Is there any impact because this, uh, from what I understand from the reports, the requirement here is they've justified the coverage, not capacity. And so this is purely a coverage issue. Um, does that information on, on leaf coverage and attenuation, does that have any bearing on capacity should in the future, because that's what's going to go up, right? get more people using more more bandwidth and so forth uh, if that's the right term on these things and then does that change or obviate a need for a higher pole or just better antennas or what are we talking about if that if that's that's, that's really a pretty good question uh, these applications were coverage they were not and she even agrees after I mentioned that they were not identified as capacity, and that's why I find all of these KPI, the key performance indicators, drop calls, failed calls, and or data throughput. Well, that's nice to look at, but you know what? It doesn't mean anything. The fact of the matter is, is there demonstrated coverage in the area? Now, in the future, 
more people. I mean, the other problem here is that the population density in this area, I mean, we're not talking about White Plains or Manhattan, you know, how many people per square mile? Significantly less. How many people using a specific system per square mile? Divided by three, let's say, or four. So the, the concept of this ultimately being a capacity site, right now, it's probably not in the cards, not, not from the KPI that I saw. But as people use mobile phones for more and more things like, like you know, it's, it's, it's incredible what people are doing in their vehicles or in their homes with, with telephones, with, with uh, smartphones. And as they use that, indeed, they will use more bandwidth. What happens then, these systems, this long-term evolution that they're using now, and we're not talking 5G, we're talking long-term evolution, what they have now. It, it really is a, a, an elegant system because Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T do something called carrier aggregation. When, when your phone is on LTE, it's looking at both networks at the same time, the 700 megahertz network and the 2100 megahertz network. Now remember, 21 doesn't cover very well, but 700 covers really well. So when they're far away from the tower, they're using 700. But as they get closer, they use 2100. Now as more speed is required, this carrier aggregation makes them use both 7 and 21, puts them together. So if they're ETH capable of X and Y, now they're capable of X plus Y. Now the other, the other elephant in the room, though, is why she did it in the other port, I don't know, 850 megahertz, their existing legacy cellular system, the original one the one they first started this with, 850. That's the CDMA system. That will be turned off at the end of this year. So that's 20 megahertz of bandwidth. That will be refarmed to long-term evolution. Long-term evolution at 700 is gonna look like long-term evolution at 800. So out on the edge, they're gonna to have tons of capacity. So don't fret at this point in time the dearth of 2100 megahertz coverage. It's not super, but they're gonna have jumbo low band coverage, it's called, it's going to be just fine. I'm, I'm not even concerned here about, uh, about uh, uh, capacity. You're a long way from it. You're going to have to add a lot more Taco Bells and, uh, to, to justify, you know, capacity situations. Thanks, Ron. Okay. I, I, I'm, I know. I, I only got about 5% of that, I think, of understanding. Oh, I'm but, sorry. But no, that's quite all right. I wanted that, that information on the record in part. So even if there were some capacity issues, what I'm, trying to, what I'm, what I'm looking at is what's the impact in the community? If, if at some point there was a capacity issue as opposed to a coverage issue, does that mean a higher tower <laughs> or just more antennas or some other equipment on the same tower? That's really where I was kind of trying to understand. The, if capacity were to be needed, it would be done by adding additional bandwidth, additional frequencies. Um, T-Mobile, for example, is using 600 megahertz frequencies okay. that they got in an auction from unused television stations. Whether that's available to Verizon in the future is uncertain. By that time, however, this new promise of the golden land of 5G uh, will probably come in and there's going to be a small pole on every other street corner where every other roadside in your community and every other community to deliver this promise of 5G, and that capacity will go there. So, so, me, um, okay. so yeah, I, I think you're safe. If, if when 5G comes, and you mentioned a small pole on every other street corner, does that mean that the existing poles come down? Well. You knew I was gonna ask that, right? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's a good question because you would say, well, if you, and the 5G uses these things called millimeter waves. They're tiny waves, they're frequencies. If you think the leaf attenuation at 700 megahertz is, you know, 8 dB, it's 48 dB at, at uh, a, a leaf basically stops 5G signals at, at 24 gigahertz, 47 gigahertz. It's just almost like light. Light doesn't go through a leaf too much, does it? Basically the same kind of thing. So what are they gonna do if they do build out a 5G network? The only way they can get it hooked up would be by fiber or some other way of bringing high capacity. One of the things that's happening now in some of these trials, 
They're using the macro sites. And this is a macro site, right? It's 140 feet tall. They're using those as nodes to distribute data to the, uh, the 5G sites. In other words, it's coming one point to multipoint. The signal is coming off the macro site and is being sent to all of the nodes. That is one way to distribute. The other way, of course, is with fiber optic cable. But then some places you don't have fiber <coughs> on the poles. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I'd like to go back to the tree. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, we heard that, what, what, can you speak to the specifics of how you would address adding branches onto the uh, uh, monopine sure. to address an extension of the Sure, it, I think it's a great segue. I'd like to introduce the president of Homeland Towers, Mr. Manny Vicente, and he can talk about the experience with extending towers and also with respect to trees. I think it'd be very helpful. Thank you, Rob. My name is Manny Vicente. I'm president of Homeland Towers. Um, and every time we design a tower, whether we think it's sufficient height or not, we always design the foundation for an extension. Um, I have been building towers uh, for 12 years under Homeland Towers, and we've never extended a tower. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, um, when we agree to a minimum height, as Ron has mentioned, we don't want to agree to a height that doesn't allow for co-location without an extension. We think this height does that. And I think what Ron said kind of supports that. If, if an extension is required, the cost go, usually gets carried onto the carriers, the T-Mobiles and, and the Sprints. So it, it discourages them financially from conducting that extension. When you have a monopine, it becomes even more difficult and more expensive and that further discourages them from extending a tower unless absolutely necessary. So I think that's important to know. The other thing too, if it's a concern about the look of a, if a monopine should be selected by the board and it's concerned, wow, if, if in the odd case it does need to be extended in order to prevent another tower from being built, you know, the integrity of that design and look we can work with the board to specifically design the branches and the length of the branches, including that extension in the future, should it ever be needed. But like I said, been doing this for a long time, uh, both uh, for Nextel, for Sprint, and now in my own company for 12 years. And I can tell you that we always design, because it's smart planning to do so, a little bit extra strength and size of the foundation goes a long way in the future and prevents a lot of unnecessary costs. We always don't do that as a matter of practice because it's good planning, but we have never actually extended a tower in those 12 years, and we built about 50 of them. So I just want to make sure that it's not something that anyone does easily, either financially or from a design perspective, um, and we would not agree to a height um, of 140 feet if we didn't feel comfortable that it does allow for the co-location of existing wireless carriers today. And just to drill down a little bit, if I heard you correctly, you, I get the point about the foundation. Right. I'm talking about the look of the tree right now. Right. Are you saying that there is an opportunity to, at this juncture, mm -hmm. design the tree so that if it ever becomes necessary to extend up that you don't have to undo the entire tree and it becomes less expensive to preserve the integrity of the look. Correct. Okay. Correct. And and you know we wouldn't we wouldn't go through that effort now, but after we, we get further along in the process and, and get the input from the public and the zoning board and, and others, should that be something that the planning board wants to do, we can work with you to actually design the actual uh, tree um, to address those type of concerns. Thank you. Well. Anybody else on the board? My, my 
opinion is it's um, time to hear from the public soon. And, and, and actually, um, we would need a motion to deny to the ZPA and then uh, a motion to schedule a public hearing. And the ECB as well, Mr. Chairman. And the ECB. So moved. Well, someone's got to be yeah, do, do the, we have to make them separate, or can you make them together? Separate. You can do them separate. Separately. Okay, so I'll make a motion to, for a denial to the uh, ZBA. Second. second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion for a denial to the ECB. For referral to the ECB. For referral to the ECB, I apologize. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing. Okay. And I will make a motion for a public hearing on this application. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah, I assume you're going to extend the shot clock. Yeah, we'll, we'll agree this evening to extend the shot clock to the end of September, and, and uh, me and your council can follow up with an email just to, just to pay for that. Um, and I assume the public hearing will be August 14th. Is August 14th is right. um, the next the next, um, next meeting. And that would be for Lake Cassie. And then on Dixon Lake, um, we've done a similar situation there. We've reduced the height this time down to 110 feet. That facility was always uh, designed to resemble a tree. So it's the same, same types of issues. We do need um, the referral to the zoning board and the public hearing. But uh, I don't believe we need it for the ECB, but I'll defer to your, um, to your staff on that. <coughs> What was the balloon test height on that one? On Dixon Lake? Yeah. That was at uh, 150, I believe. So the original balloon float was 150, and the current proposed height is 110, you said? Correct. And the, the couple of comments about? I'm sorry, 160. We did it at 160. 160? Yeah, because it was a 157-foot um, tower design tree, so it was that was the range. And his comments, um, I'm not sure they're from Mike or Rich, uh, Rich about the gravel access drive must be, you know, paved and whatnot. And we did that. Yep. Okay. We did that. Well, we have, we still can go through our comments tonight. We haven't done that yet, right? No. Okay. okay. Why don't we do that then, Mike? Basically, the exact same memo as last one with different numbers. Do you want me to read them all or? You can. Same thing on the FCC law. It allows the increase of 10% or 20 feet. Uh, variances are required for the height of the tower. 75 feet allowed, 110 proposed, 35 foot variances required. Two way aisle width, 24 is required to have 12. Same thing as the other property. And six foot high maximum fence height to have eight feet proposed. They need a variance for the additional two feet. I, I should have asked this before and I failed to. We don't have a problem going down to the six foot fence. We believe the eight foot's a better option given the location. Uh, and, and the security of it. I don't know if the planning board has a preference, but we're happy to seek the variance. You go on the zoning board anyway. Yeah, if that's you, what we if thought. If you weren't okay. going, I would say maybe yeah, don't, I, but. I just wanted to make sure no one had a big concern about security defense. and it's gonna yeah. be, okay. I don't see that. We're on the same page. Thank yeah. you. Rich. So this application is a 110 foot tower designed to resemble a tree, a monopine, uh, with a fence 57 foot by 65 foot compound for related equipment. Uh, this tower exceeds the uh, maximum height of 50 feet. The max it could be 75, and it's now 110. Uh, requirements set forth in 156.62.03 uh, have not been provided. Um, the priority site five should be explained why a higher priority was not selected. You mentioned the gravel driveway, Mr. Chairman. The applicant has noted the comment and is paving the driveway. Uh, for about um, 150 feet, which is the area where it exceeds the, um, <coughs> uh, the slopes. Um, the applicant must demonstrate the proposed how will not unreasonably interfere with view from the town park, which is McDonough Park. Um, all planting should be verified by the wetlands inspector and installed per section 142 of the town, town of Carmel Town Code. Notes should just be added to the drawing that they're gonna adhere to that. Disturbance is 26,850 feet. I spoke to the engineer earlier. They're aware that they need a permit from the state with regards to the, uh, for stormwater. Um, and it's just erosion and center of control. It's ministerial there that they have to submit an NOI and uh, MS4 acceptance form and NOIs and notice of intent. Uh, same comment as before, silt fence and stabilized construction insurance. They provided the details. They just mean conformance with New York State DEC requirements. 
Soil stockpile, soil stockpile locations are to be shown on the drawing. Lighting spill pans should be provided. Graphic representation of vehicle movements through the site should be provided to make sure that there's sufficient space to move all type of vehicles. We're turning rate and associated turning radii for the site should be provided. And any public improvements deemed necessary, uh, a performance bond and associated engineering fee will be must be established for the work. Thank you. All right. And the same issues apply in this application, Mr. Chairman. So the same referrals are required as well for this. They have addressed our initial comments. Um, the, there is not an equipment shelter proposed. There are cabinets proposed, not a building. Um, they've clarified the landscaping, screening that area, the fencing, screening that area. Um, and they've clarified the lighting in that area as well. There are no lights on this facility. So they've clarified those questions. And again, procedurally, it's the same issue as the last application. And the utilities be underground on this one also? This we had always proposed the underground. Yeah, I didn't see anything yeah. from any of the memos. So this yeah. one will be underground also. Correct. And the only question on this one is the ECB. I don't think. No, no ECB. No ECB. There was an inspection performed. Any of the work that's being performed, it's outside the 100 foot boundary. Any new questions? Um, I, I know you provided this for the Lake Cassie site, but it wasn't. I know you provided this for the Lake Cassie site, but I didn't see it in the application um, for Dixon. Is there a property value report? The Dixon? Uh, we can certainly provide one. It's, um, we can certainly provide one. I'll okay. leave it at that. Ron? I just uh, make one comment. It, it's in my report. If you send this to a, uh, uh, the comment isn't, but uh, the notation is, if you send this to a, a, a public hearing, uh, typically public hearings have gone to, they bring in someone, they have the map showing the coverage or whatever. So the, under, the audience understands uh, how this was done, where the coverage is or is not. I'm not sure that's going to happen. But the only thing I, that the, the discrepancies I noted in my report with respect to the table of contents with the exhibits didn't agree with the exhibits. Did you read that? Maybe you missed that. I might have yeah. missed that. I bet okay. That one might have gotten yeah. to ask me. Uh, the, and, and the exhibits themselves are not uh, on the copy that I had, the PDF, are not yeah, identified. Yeah, that I noticed. I didn't. I, I, They're not I identified. And, and she calls out, uh, she says, like, exhibit H, uh, yeah. 700 megahertz. Well, we'll exhibit H that. is 2100 megahertz. So it may be confusing to an audience. I don't know. But she, I think you would like the record to be exact. So I'll make a motion to uh, schedule a public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And yeah, you can. I'll make a motion to refer this to the ZBA. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for Thank your time you. this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, I, I need to do that. I'll need to stamp the maps nine into the ZBA. I get you. Uh, Centennial came off, so um, after I stamp the maps.